I would say that I've, at, during the 32 years I've been at the Metropolitan and the number of exhibitions I've been involved in, this is certainly one of the most beautiful and perhaps the most, uh, the most important that I've been involved in. And this is really due entirely to the collaboration uh, with Berlin and to Stefan's extraordinary dedication to the project. Berlin and New York both have very strong collections of portraiture. And the reason they do is because the creators of these two museums in the 19th century were so interested in Renaissance portraiture. They were interested in the faces of the past, and they put together, they assembled these extraordinary collections. Uh, so when uh, my colleague Stefan Beppelmann came to the Metropolitan, he said, you know, we have two very strong collections. We could use this as a core to do a landmark exhibition about portraiture in the defining period of portraiture. And that's how it happened. But increasingly, I think portraits for us in the modern world are digital images, things that we put on Facebook, which has created a whole new char uh, character of portraiture. And we store them in our computer files. It's almost impossible to imagine a world without images of our friends and favorite personalities. The exhibition encompasses 150 works of art, paintings, sculpture, medals, drawings, all from 15th century Italy. This is one of the turning points in history, and it's the first age of portraits. In other words, it's the first moment when we actually can put faces to the names of historical people. Why does this happen all of a sudden in the 15th century? And faced with this new idea of creating portraits, not simply of kings and queens, but of not ordinary people, but well-to-do people, people of, uh, in some position, what are the conditioning factors? That's what this exhibition really explores. And it tries to explore it throughout the peninsula of Italy. And anybody who has, this, has, uh, has this even sketchy knowledge of the Renaissance will know that Italy didn't exist as a country, it existed as regions. So we start in Florence, we go to many of the courts which are ruled by princes, by Marchese, by dukes and so forth, and we end up in Venice. And, uh, and the, the viewer will encounter different kinds of portraiture in each of these places. It's an incredibly rich story. And I think you'll leave beginning to look at that, uh, at that photograph that you last took and asking yourself what it says to you and why you took it, and why, in fact, we do commemorate people, why portraits mean something to us. And it's, Italy that for, it's, it's in Renaissance Italy that these questions are first explored. Uh, commemoration, memory, a loved one. How do we want to remember that person? How do we want that person to look? How do we want ourselves to look? Artists, of course, had to grapple with this immediately when they painted most of us who are less than perfect looking and have certain issues about a good side, a bad side, a blemish that would rather be suppressed and so on and so forth. So it brings up the whole issue of resemblance as well, identity, self-projection and so forth. All of these issues are first defined in the 15th century, so it's a really interesting period.